Hey there. Welcome to that independent streak. I'm Wendy Campbell. And you know, I spent most of my career on the mic doing interviews with rock radio stars. But in these later years, I'm finding that I have a lot more questions and a lot more details I want to find answers to. So I find a little bit more value in interviewing people and telling their stories and letting them tell their stories. We started the podcast really to create a tribe of people who love to travel, to eat, love life, and generally speaking, enjoy health and wellness. Now, each guest is different. Some are friends, some are strangers, some I agree with, and some I definitely don't, but all are very entertaining. And I think the purpose of this and the podcast in general is really to find that common ground. There's a lot of people who have a lot of opinions and we don't have to agree with all of them. So this is an opportunity to learn more about those people, find out where that common ground is and kind of take a little bit, you know, with each different conversation that you can use in your life to kind of help you navigate and maybe see a different perspective. Today's guest is Linda King. She is the smart travelista and uh, well, she's got a lot of books. So she's got the author of the smart travelista series, the travel guides and a travel writer and blogger. Now she's also the founder of the smart travelista a newsletter and website that offers you tips on how to find the best travel deals and how to plan for every trip you take. We cover so many things in this podcast. So this time we actually cover everything from traveling on a budget, the best places to travel, how to travel plan, which is something that I'm not terribly great at, uh, when to travel, where to shop when you travel, how to change your currency, you forget about that because you got your credit cards, but sometimes that cash is going to be the better deal. Travel safety and so, so much more. So if you travel at all, whether you're a man, a woman, if you've got a family, you're traveling alone, a group of people, we cover all of it. So this is definitely a podcast you're going to want to listen all the way to the end till because she has got so many tips packed in to the very end. Uh, that being said, all of her details are going to be found on my website if you want to check it out or in the show notes at thatindependentstreetpodcast.com. Um, make sure if you want to help support the podcast that you share it. If you find something interesting, you've got somebody who's getting ready for a trip, this might be the one for them. Um, if you follow, because then you'll see when all the new podcasts come out. And if, uh, well, you just kind of leave a review. That's always fun too. Um, at any rate, without further ado, Linda King, the smart travelista. There we go. There we go. How are you? It's the morning, correct? You're in Australia morning. So glad to have you on today. I think uh, I'm kind of excited about this one because I feel like my life has been an ambition to travel as much as possible. I think since birth, I felt mm -hmm. that way. And the more I can save money while I do it, I think the better. But before we get into all the, the neat tips and tricks that you have, because you have plenty to share, um, I would love for you to just tell me your story. Tell me how you got here, how, um, you know, everybody starts with kind of like a, an innocent mission that turns into a lifelong passion. And I'd love to hear yours. Sure. So yeah, I'm, I've been traveling since I was a child. Um, my parents, like we, every school holidays, we would go somewhere and then later on, um, my parents took me and my siblings on a round Australia trip, um, which was for four months. And that totally opened my eyes to, to travel. And I'm being innocent as I was at that age. I said to my parents, can we do this forever? Mm. Um, obviously, that wasn't going to happen. Um, but I made it a reality because when, then when I left school, um, I got into the travel industry Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, booking for other people, but also booking for myself. So um, that innocent comment when I was a child actually came true. I made sure that it came true. Um, and so a lot of what I do now with the Smart Travelista is around travel and my love of travel um, and also saving money. So, you know, traditionally travel can be quite expensive mm -hmm. um, depending on where you're going, but Obviously, I've learned a few tricks of the trade um, and I like to travel as cheaply as everyone else, but obviously not, you know, just um, not without the quality. So, you know, we could go backpacker and and, and all hosteling, um, but, you know, you want to be comfortable when you travel, but you don't want that, that really expensive price tag. Mm -hmm. So um, with one way or another, travel's always been in my life um, and... Now I love, you know, at the moment I, with what I do, I, I share what I've learned and, um, you know, I want that as a reality for everyone to be able to travel because I think it's the, the most wonderful thing in the world. 
So you said that you um, started as a travel agent and started in that space, obviously, before we kind of shifted into the everything happens online. Um, at what point did you know that you wanted to take it in a different direction? Mm-hmm. When did you start stepping out and, and deciding that you were going to do your own thing and curating your own your own adventures? Well, I was in the travel industry and then I left the travel industry and got into finance. And when, you know, obviously traveling still, but without the benefits that I had in the travel industry. And and then it, it, it was a conversation that I had with another traveler. I was in the Middle East. And um, she was just asking me, we're having conversations and talking about travel tips. And then she said to me, do you have a website? Do you have a blog? She goes, because I definitely follow you. You've got some really, really good tips. Um, You've actually taught me some things. And I was like, you know what? I've got none of that. And then I thought about that. And, and, you know, obviously it became a bit of a pattern. People would ask questions. And then I thought, you know what? I've I've really got to document all this. Mm-hmm. And, and make something of it because I've obviously got expertise in that arena and people want to hear the tips. So um, instead of just telling everyone, I thought I've got to make it more formal, have my mm-hmm. website, write the books, do the blog, um, make videos, whatever, you know, and, and then that way people can um, listen, read, whatever um, their best medium is to pick up those tips. Okay. So roll it back. You're in the Middle East. You're talking on a casual conversation with a stranger. You're giving her tips. So where in the Middle East are you? What are you doing? And what are the tips that you're giving her? Because something inspired her to go deeper and want more. So I want to know what those tips were. What was the conversation? So the conversation was we were at the airport. She'd see me on the flight and I arrived earlier than her. So um, we were waiting for the transfer and she said, I know you're on my flight because I saw you. How did you arrive so quickly (laughs) with your bags? And then that conversation got into, well, I was traveling business class. And then she said to me, what, you paid cash for business class? I said, no, no, I I use points for business. And so that got into the conversation. Oh, I have never built my points. How does that, how does that work? And then I started giving her some tips around that. Um, and yeah, she goes, well, that's something I'm definitely going to look into. And she goes, I want to be like you. I want to get off the plane first. <laughs> um, yes. but yeah, there were just other conversations also. Uh-huh. Awesome. <laughs> um, so why pay for business class when you can use your points? I agree. Um, In fact, points were yeah. only explained to me maybe eight or 10 years ago. As, as you need to get a credit card with, with reward points so that you can use a travel card so that you can accrue your points so that you can go where you want to go. It, and when, can you explain that a little bit for maybe some of the listeners who are younger or maybe some of the listeners who haven't really taken advantage of that opportunity yet? Yeah, so credit card is only one point of the, of the, the airline miles. But what, what happens is you, when you're looking for a credit card, Mm-hmm. You look at ones that are affiliated with the airline or the airline loyalty program that you, you're wanting to investigate and get into. So for me in Australia, we've got banks. They usually affiliate themselves and there's quite a number of cards that will do that. So what they do is they're promoting that you go on that airline, uh, that you that you buy their products. So when they're talking about getting a credit card, you usually get a credit card where you're going to get the maximum amount of points. So for me, if I go with my credit card or one of my credit cards, if I get flights with that airline, then they're going to give me double and triple points. Um, we've got other options in Australia where we can go, um, there's an, a loyalty program connected with the credit card, which when you're doing your supermarket shopping every week actually builds your points. So with that, you're building points for getting your food shopping and then you're also getting points for the credit card so you're getting, in a, in a way, double points. So I think credit cards, yes, is one p- part of it. But what I really think is if you're going to get really serious about building points, firstly, you need to work out what loyalty program am I going to join? Mm-hmm. What airline am I going to travel the most on? And again, there might be more than one airline. So there might be multiple loyalty programs that you might want to join. And then it's about looking at and going, okay, what partners have that loyalty program got that I'm using already? So it might be a financial institution. It would definitely maybe be a credit card. 
it might be, you know, utilities, it might be your mobile or your phone plan. So it's just about delving into that. For me, if you're going to go into airline mile building, go into it hard or don't go into it at all is my um, my thoughts around that because you need to really understand the program. Um, so yes, credit cards is one that's promoted quite heavily, but there are actually other options that you can do to, to build a, build quite a few points as well. Okay. Let's go into your top five. I want to know, but here's what I want to do. And this is a, the original idea of this podcast was we were going to build a network of women who could get together. We talk about food and health and wellness and travel. And then eventually we'd all travel together. Um, a lot of cases. And I think, you know, um, a lot of people are still maybe even a little apprehensive about travel. Travel's gotten a little expensive. We've got new IDs that we've got to take care of. So we've, we've got to get everybody back on board. <laughs> Let's start with the finances of how do we set it up to start creating the environment mm. to most benefit the best point allotment and the best, uh, I guess the best travel tips so that we can, we can do as much travel as possible with as little money as possible and good travel. Like I think, I think in a lot of cases, you yeah. know, some people think cheap travel and, and budget travel and they think hostels and they think backpacking and, and, and I think there's gotta be, there's gotta be some tips in there for people who maybe want to stay in a nice hotel and eat a nice dinner and plan that through. I think, think about what you want to achieve out of it. Um, and then let's do a plan. So what you want to cover your finances and your travel, well, you can do that in the same. So think about what you do in your everyday life, um, daily life. So what what are the products? What are the financial products you need? Um, you're going to need a bank account. You're probably going to need a credit card if you travel because they ne you know credit cards is probably the wide, most widely used form of payment when you travel. Um, and then just think about everything else that you do. So for me, with with what I do, I've got my mobile phone plan as a partner. I've got the credit card. I've got the banking products. I've got the supermarket products. I've got the insurance products. Um, so it's just about looking at it holistically. So if you build those points and use that as your main strategy or one of your big strategies, you're then going to have points that you can then use for free free flight. And you can also stay in those really nice hotels because you'll be able to redeem points for that as well. So if you get really savvy about it and put everything and also put everything that you can with your spending on your credit card. So I know this can be a bit dangerous for some people. Um, and what you need to do is, so pay no cash, pay it all credit card. At the end of the month, when your statement comes through, pay that off so you're not paying interest. And just have that as a way of life. So everything that I do is on credit card. Mm -hmm. And then when my statement period comes up, it gets wiped totally. So one, I'm not giving the credit card interest. Um, and then it's all getting paid for. So what that does, it builds up a tremendous amount of points. And then when my next trip is coming up, say if I'm going to Europe, I usually go for really long haul flights or whether I'm going to America. And then what I would do is redeem for those flights that I need and then also the accommodation. So already you've, you've taken out two of the most expensive things that you would need to pay for in travel, which are your flights and also the accommodation. So it's just about having that plan. So um, plan ahead um, and, and have that plan. As far as saving money, um, on travel, online's the best way to go. So if you go with a travel agent, they're going to promote um, the best products where they get the highest commission. I know that because that's what I used to do as a travel agent as well. Although booking online can take a bit of time and probably a bit of research, that is going to be well spent because once you start booking online for yourself, you're going to see tremendous savings. Nice. Now, where do you find the best deals online? Because I think... Um at least in my experience, um, 
when I go to book travel and I go to start looking at different destinations, I get a little overwhelmed with the options. I get a little overwhelmed with, with curated trips. And I also get a little overwhelmed with, with, I want to do all the things, but I also want to stay in budget. So where would you start if you were Mm -hmm. trying to, you know, just even looking at different destinations to decide, do I want to go to Europe or do I want to go to Australia or do I want to go to the UK or do I want to go to China? So before you think about where you want to go, you need to know um, what the weather's like over there. So whether it's, you know, going to be winter or summer, Mm -hmm. you need to probably consider that because if you go in summertime, you're going to be paying bigger prices. If you go in the off and shoulder seasons, you're going to be paying less as far as price. But obviously you've also got to work out when you can get annual leave. So probably your employer is the first place you've got to start because you've got to find out that you can get that annual leave first up. Then thinking about where you want to go, what what have you been dreaming about or that you've been seeing a lot of? You know, uh, For me, when I was at school, we did a lot of ancient history and we did Europe. And so for me, when I first started, that was the first place I went to because I'd been investigating that probably since I've been at school. So everyone's going to be different, Wendy, with where they want to go. So, you know, people have got bucket lists. What's on your bucket list? What, what's the place that you, you want to go to that's on the bucket list? Um, and then start investigating. So you go, okay, I want to save money. I don't want to pay top price. So let's work out when it's really cheap to go there. Um, and also another good thing around that, if you've you've built up, you know, obviously you've picked your loyalty program and you've picked the airline that you you think that you're going to travel on long haul, sign up for their e- email news like their emailing list because on the email list they'll tell you when the sales are on. That's another tip as well. So you know, say for instance, okay, I want to go to Vietnam. I don't want to go there when it's steaming hot. I want to go there when it's a little bit cooler. And usually that'll be the cheaper price also. What do I want to do there? I want to go shopping, of course. Um, so, But you've also got to investigate what else is is there. Is there, you know, tours I want to go on? Is there other things that I want to do while I'm there? Also, another thing that I look at, I look at the cost of living there. So, um, you know, obviously Asia is very cheap. So straight up, you're going to have a cheap trip. Um, If I was to go to Europe, then that's going to be a little bit more expensive. So we've got to try and find a few more good deals around that to make sure we bring the cost down. Um, Another thing I will look at is the currency. What's the currency exchange rate against, you know, obviously the US dollar to the dong in Vietnam? Let's see, you know, how that works out. So it's about having a look at that having a budget in mind and also, you know, obviously when you've got your your leave approved, what's your budget? What is the budget of money that you can't go over to go on that trip? So your budget's also going to dictate where you go to. Um, if you've only got, you know, two and a half thousand dollars going to Europe, well, you might get there for maybe a few days and then you'll have to come back and the airfare itself will probably cost that amount of money. So True. there's all these things that you've got to consider um, but I start with my bucket list. What's on the bucket list? What are the places that I that I want to mark off, you know, on my list? What budget have I got? Okay. And then let's have a look at the places that are going to be affordable within that that budget. And then I think from there, um, it's about, you know, going online. So going back to your question, online, I have quite a few blog posts that I've listed probably about in excess of, I think around about 50 places where you can go online that are actually going to save you money and give you good prices for um, whether it be flights, accommodation, touring activities. Um, So I can certainly share share that with you later. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's certainly um, places that I've used from experience and that I know that actually are, are respected uh, travel companies. Um, and I think, you know, never be afraid to research. Um, and I know there's a lot out there, but it's it's about, um, okay, that's a great one. I'm going to add that to my list. So I have a running list of the place, of the travel um, 
websites that I use to get the best bargains. And then after a while, that cuts down the the time and booking also because you have your list, um, and then you're on the eye. You've got your eye out for others as well. So, yeah, it's it's an ongoing um, investigation with travel, and you've got to keep you know on top of new companies that are out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think signing up for the mailing list is a really great one. So, you know, we we get bombarded with emails, obviously, all the every day. I always think about those travel emails that I get as gold because they're going to be the ones that are, are going to help me save money with how my much, travel. How much travel do you do a year? So we need to flag them and make sure we're... Sorry, Wendy. How much travel do you do in a year? Gosh, it's been a busy year for me this year. I think I've been to about seven places. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, so obviously, you know, we couldn't travel for a while. So I've really got stuck into it this year. Um, for me, gosh, where have I been to this year? Um, I went to the Philippines, South Korea, um, Indonesia, um, Thailand just only a few weeks ago, Cook Islands, and I'm heading to Japan in November. So uh, for me, this has been a really busy year. Um, normally, I don't do that many, um, but I've had a few of them which were work-related. So, um, But I took advantage of that, obviously. As well. Oh, absolutely. That's my favorite kind. But um when you're when you're traveling especially when you're traveling say um you know to places like vietnam and and indonesia it's so different from here um you're looking for a good deal you're looking for interesting things to do while you're gone um where do you start when you start putting together that plan where to me because to me it's like okay uh, let's say i'm going to go to the philippines I don't know anybody in the Philippines. I don't have any experience in the Philippines. I don't know which locations are better than the other. And maybe I don't have a lot of time to sit and go through 50 different websites to look for that. So where do you typically direct people to do kind of go go through that process um, in a manner that's, you know, time effective as well as cost effective? So every country will have a tourist bureau or a web or a website. So that's a really good place to start. You know, so if you say Google, um, say if it's Vietnam, Vietnam, usually up at the top of most of the result web results, you'll see something called um, Vietnam Bureau. I don't know where the bureau is, but, you know, Vietnam Travel or something like that. So I would go there because they're going to have all the resources about Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's probably my one big tip. And I still do that myself. If it's a new place I've never been to. For instance, I hadn't been to the Cook Islands, so I, I Googled Cook Islands and up came the, their tourist bureau and I was like, okay, this is where the first place I need to start. And on there, it'll give you different options. So it'll tell you what the best things to do there are um, and all and, and sort of give you ideas of, of trips that you can take, places to stay, things to do. It sometimes gives you costs, so it tells you the local um, standard of living costs as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a that's probably my big tip um, if you're you know very time poor to do that first up and then from that it'll then it will direct you to other websites so it might say you know for touring click on this link so that's probably your best um, tip really around that also um, the airline websites are really good so the airline websites that I use usually will give you destination guides so they'll call them insider guides um, so I, what I would do is look for the tourist bureau or, or the the national tourist authority, but also look for the airlines as well because they have a lot of um, blog posts, tourism guides, and all that sort of stuff. So I would that that would be my tip. Nice, nice. What's your favorite that you've seen so far this year? Destination this year, um, I'd have to say two actually. Wendy, South Korea. I've never, I had never been to South Korea, um, and Cook Islands. I think is totally lovely um, in the Pacific as well. But yeah, South Korea. I don't think people have really go there too much. I think because it's very close to North Korea. Right. <laughs> Proximity um, to North Korea is definitely one of my issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I could tell you a little story about while I was there. Actually, um, obviously, we know. Our little friend in North Korea likes to to do testing um, occasionally. The last day of my trip, 
he was doing testing and you could actually feel the booming as I was on my way to the airport. Um, and when you're in South Korea, every day they have a warning that comes through on your mobile saying um, safety alert at around 4 p.m. every night. So, yeah, it, it, I mean, look, it was a great place. I'm a big shopper, so I, lo I love the shopping there. It was amazing. What and kind of shopping do you do? such an interesting in, place. What kind, of, what kind of shopping do you do in South Korea? Oh, there's a place called Manjong in South Korea. There's cosmetics, face masks, beauty, beauty um, products. Um, there's everything you can imagine there, handbags, fashion. Um, they've got a lot of Japanese products there as well, which are quite cheap. Um, so if you really love your face products, um, face masks, then I would definitely put South Korea on your list. Um, and another tip, the Japanese go to South Korea for all their beauty products. <laughs> nice. So it must be cheap if the Japanese are going there. Nice. Um, but yeah, that was, that was amazing shopping. Um, Cook Islands, I didn't do any shopping. That was more like a relaxation and um, detox of technology and just those are important a, a, too. A those vacations are equally important. I think so. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. So I was actually prepping for this. Um, I was talking to some friends and we were like, you know, we should go on a trip together. We should just go. We'll plan it. We'll, we'll, we'll do all the things. When you're talking about um, curating and planning a trip for more than yourself and you're looking at friends and you're still looking at kind of keeping cost effective, maybe you've got children with you, whatever the case may be. Um, do you have, have you, have you spent a lot of time like looking at different ways to manage the accommodations for, you know, a group of people as opposed to just a single traveler, or are you more focused on the single traveler journey? So I do both. Um, obviously I do a lot of solo travel as well, but I travel with other people. Um, it depends on where you're going and what everyone wants to do. So um, everyone's different. Like some people like hotels because of the security and safety aspect. Mm -hmm. um, but also you've got Air Airbnbs and, you know, depending on people's budget. So again, focusing back on people's budget, the question I'd be asking all the friends is, what's, that, what's your budget? You know, what, what can you afford every night for accommodation? And I think that would then lead you into choosing what's the best. So, you know, there might be people in your group that might go well actually hosteling's probably my budget um <laughs> or people might say you know other people might say hotels mm -hmm. so to, to get a happy medium maybe an airbnb might be the way to go because then it is sort of a, you know because you've got a lot of people in the trip so you know four or five people maybe you can get an airbnb property that's actually going to be really cost effective mm -hmm. one one thing about hotels Obviously, being on a as a solo travel, that can get quite expensive because you're paying probably traditionally what a family would pay, which then works out cheaper. Mm -hmm. So it's really around the budget and what people want. So I'd, I'd be asking, you know, if, if you're, all your friends want to go, it'd be having a bit of a chat chat with them and saying, okay, what what do you traditionally travel with? Do you go hotels? Do you do Airbnbs? What is it that you do? And then you can get a consensus with everyone and go, okay, well, let's investigate. Let's firstly price the different options and then we can vote on which one we, we choose. Um, I think with with flights, you don't have the luxury of that. It's pretty much you've got that flight and that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, but there are budget airlines, you know, that you can choose. So if you don't need the full product and the, and the meals and all that and the ex, extra luggage, then maybe you can go a budget airline as well. So again, it's just really about people's budget mm -hmm. and finding out what people, you know, can afford, I think is the big question. Airbnb seems to be going through a strange kind of, um, I don't want to call it a reckoning, but they're going through a strange like shift into, um, you know, novelty into, into, to now it's part of mainstream reality. Um, are Airbnbs, like I've seen a lot of Airbnbs where it sounds like a really great idea until the fees are added and then it becomes a really expensive option um, where even, even for a group of people, it just, it increases the budget so drastically. So are they still a good idea or is it still, you know, I, 
I don't know if they've kind of moved to a different model, you know, if, if things have changed, but it, it does seem like there's, there's a lot more hidden fees than there used to be. Um, and so maybe the, the, the economy of it isn't there. Are you, are you seeing that? Yeah. yeah you know what? I think Airbnb when it first launched in the market was quite uh, affordable. I think that that was their way of getting people into it and, and getting them to try I think now that it's been around for a little bit longer, I think it is getting a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I haven't personally used Airbnb, um, but I know people that have, and they've had really bad experiences with it, where they've turned up and, and the, the accommodation wasn't booked. So they've paid for it and everything, and then they've actually then had to go and get, say, a hotel, um, which had you know probably quite disappointing and quite stressful when you get to your location um so i think again it's around the group um how many people you've got in the group but i think hotels are, are sort of um coming back at the airbnb and trying to be a little bit more competitive so i think hotels traditionally have been quite expensive and i think by um, airbnb disrupting the market it's actually made them pull their socks up a bit and, and make things a little bit more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, again, it's it's up to the individual. I think once a product becomes established, I think it then does raise its prices um, because it's it, it knows it's got a certain market then and it can. And, and if the de demand is there, then they can raise the prices. Mm -hmm. um, but I think competition is great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great in in everything in travel so you know you've got different airlines you've got different accommodation providers and different travel um, companies I think that's great for the traveler because it means that ideally you're going to get the best deal because there is that competition when the competition gets stripped away then that's when the prices are more expensive so I think yes in my opinion and everyone's got a different opinion I do think Airbnb is sort of raising their prices Right. Gradually. Right. Interesting. Interesting. I'm curious to see how, how that evolves. Um, cause I think it was a really great idea until it, it wasn't. <laughs> and so it's definitely one of those things. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you go on travel trips and, and, you know, even if you go independent or you go, you know, with a girlfriend or you go in a small yes. group, there's, <laughs> um, there's, there's the question of, you know, your safety and security when you travel, what, what would you say your top, maybe three mm. tips are for safety when you're traveling, especially when you're doing it on budget, because you tend to skip a few, a few of the important details. Like, um, you know, if you're not staying in a, ho a hotel, you know, it may not be as secure, or if you're staying in, you know, a hostel or wherever you're going, especially just even traveling in a foreign country at this point can be a little bit tricky. So what, what would you recommend as far as managing your safety abroad? So I, my top one would be be really self-aware and observant about what you're doing and the people around you. Um, and, and try, you know, try and get sleep before you arrive. So you're not really badly jet lagged because jet being very, very tired also puts you at a risk. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, be really self-aware of, of an observant of people around you and mm -hmm. also of events around you. So, you know, if something doesn't look right, then get out of there really quickly. <laughs> um, secondly, what I would say is your money and your belongings. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would say, depending on where you're staying. So with a hotel, you've probably got a little bit more security with your belongings um, but what I would what I always do is I lock up everything on a daily basis when I um, go out and the room's going to be serviced um, lock everything up that's of value if it's you know clothing that you don't care about and it's hanging up that's fine but you know especially your money what I would also do with the money don't have all your money in the one spot so if you've got your credit cards and you've got foreign cash break it up into little parcels and make sure that you put it in different spots don't take all the money that you've got with you out it, like we would in a wallet mm -hmm. take how much out how much you think you would need um for that day and then you know obviously take your credit card if if you go over that budget if you're staying in a hostel what i would do is get your handbag and your all your travel belongings like your, your documents and put that under the blankets with you 
because if you're staying in a hostel, obviously you're in there with a lot of other people that you probably don't know. Mm -hmm. And they can go through things while you're asleep. So Mm -hmm. I know it sounds like a bit of a crazy idea. Get your handbag, your travel documents, your passport, put it inside the blankets with you. And I don't think someone's going to pull your blanket apart we while, hope not. while you're asleep. <laughs> and if they do, well, then that'd wake you up anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and another thing that I do also, and it's something that um, someone told me years ago, you know how you've got those little door stops that you can actually you, you put under the door to actually keep the door open? Mm-hmm. So they're like little rubber. I don't know whether right. you've got them in the US, those little do. door stops. Take one of those with you because it's actually a really good security. Um, it holds the door closed. And it, it's sort of like another layer if someone's trying to break into the room. So um, you just push it in and then it just stops people from getting in the room. Mm-hmm. So they'd probably be my top three tips, I would nice. say. Nice. When I was I was 15 and I was traveling through the south of France with a school trip. Um, and we were traveling from, I believe, Perpignan back to Paris, getting ready to leave that next day. So we were taking a sleeper train and, uh, a weird gentleman had walked onto the train and somehow found his way into our room and, and was up on top of like the luggage rack or whatever. And so we went and gotten security and, and had him kicked out and long story short, he got kicked out with all of my identification documents, all of my money, everything. He had basically taken my wallet and stuck it in a fake uh, cast. And so uh, I spent the next day, obviously trying to prove my validity as an American uh, to the embassy so that I could get my my transport back. But um, ever since then, I've been very aware of what's happening around me and in and the people around me, especially just because it's so, it can be so random and so crazy. But the flip side of that is I've also gotten into random trucks in the middle of the Middle East to go to a camp um, without a lot of thought process in it. And so sometimes, you know, I think, I think intuition and trust are in, in, in the, in the situation are important, but also, you know, you don't want to lose and you don't want to miss the adventure either. You don't want to be so wound up in, in the insecurity of it that you don't, do the the thing you want to do the travel you want to do the trip and and get the experience so um i think being safe is a is a tricky one because especially if you're you know i think uh in in the middle east i was traveling with a girlfriend you know and in in france i was with a, a group of people but it could happen at any time bad things can happen at any time so it's a matter of, of really um you know aligning to everything would you go so far as to check in with the embassy and 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 let the embassy know that you're in country? Yes, absolutely. And not only do that, but I would also have their number on my speed dial um, on my phone. And um, also another good thing, if you lose your passport, have a have a, a photo of it on your mobile, but also have a paper copy of it and put that somewhere separate to where you've got your passport. So um, that's quite handy, actually. Sometimes when you've got to change foreign currency, they'll go, have you got your passport? And if you've got a colour copy of it, then that that can be used also without actually having to um, have your passport on you. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. And it's like ins- insurance, right? Something bad might not happen, but knowing that you've got their number, toll-free number, that is, is a good thing because then you know um, you know who to call, who'd, who's, who's going to, from your country, is going to be able to help you and give you options. Um, another good thing to keep is also the emergency number. So, you know, obviously um, in Australia, it's triple zero. I think it's okay. um, 9, 9, 9-11, isn't it, in, in the mm-hmm. US? So exactly. find out the, the local co- country's um, emergency number also. So then you can call that. Um, but, yeah, I think with travel, you've got to understand that there are risks. But I think if you prepare and do your research, then you're armed with good knowledge. Can you stop everything happening? No, you can't. But if you've got a plan and you know what you're going to do if something happens, then I think that's part of the part of the deal, you know, and you might have a trip and nothing goes wrong and you go, great, I didn't have to use that plan, but it's always about having the contingency plan. What are you going to do if something does go wrong? Um, and, you know, I think when things do go wrong, I think you build your resilience also 
and when something does go wrong again some on another trip you go well actually I've had worse things happen to me I think I can handle this <laughs> exactly exactly so you actually mentioned something that triggered a, a question I have um we were talking about currency so and I don't want to give away my age but back in the day when you had to get currency you'd like land on on onshore right and then you'd go and change your money that was like the first thing you did um, nowadays with credit cards and everything else, it seems like most countries take American credit cards and most countries take American currency. So what advice do you have as far as currency changes? Are there certain countries where you would definitely recommend, you know, taking currency like their currency, um, or would you just recommend taking credit cards and taking and making sure that you've got American currency? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on where you're going to. So say you're going to Scandinavia. Or somewhere like that they mm -hmm. don't take cash it's all on credit card now um but if you're going to somewhere like asia they love cash they accept credit card as well um but they, they, they really love the cash especially in the markets and in the shopping malls mm -hmm. um another tip i would say is don't change the money over before you leave if you're going to a place like asia because you'll get a better exchange rate out on the street um, and because they have a lot of currency little boosts. Mm -hmm. So for me as an Australian, and you know, I've been to a few Asian countries this year, I, I took no money over with me. Oh, like I had Australian cash. As soon as I arrived, I then went out to a booth and um, got that better exchange rate. One thing about changing it, say at the airport or with your bank, you're not getting the best exchange rate. Mm -hmm. But it depends on the country. So I can't say that for every country. Right. Um, but I can definitely say for Asia, and it would be for you if you were coming from the US to go to Asia. Yes, your credit cards are going to be accepted. They love cash. Um, but, you, you, you know, you just wait till you get there. So how do you know when you're over there? Um, you know, most of my... I guess my, my personal exchanges have been in France and places like, like European countries where it's very clear. Um, when you're in a country that is so foreign, like the Orient or anywhere, um, how do you know, like if you're going to a booth, how do you know it's legitimate versus um, something that, you know, might be a stand up, you know, <laughs> bait and switch? Yeah. So what I do, I normally ask the hotel. So I'll say to them, um, I firstly would ask the hotel and say, what exchange rate are you offering for my Australian dollars? And normally they will say, we're offering X amount of dollars, but you know what? It's better outside. Mm. So I would always ask the hotel. So a lot of hotels, I don't think all hotels, but a lot of hotels will actually exchange money for you. Mm -hmm. And it's about asking them. So when I first started going to Asia, that was the bit of advice that I was given. They were going, yes, we can change your money, but you know, actually outside's better. Um, and so from that point onwards, it, I went outside. But again, if we're talking Europe, Europe's a different di different situation altogether. Mm -hmm. They do have currency boosts, but, you know, um, sometimes you're probably better off getting that before you leave. Another thing you need to be aware of, though, with these currency boosts, you need to make sure that they're giving you legitimate money. Um, so what I would do is I would actually when they hand the money over, have a look at the money and, and have a look and see whether it looks legitimate. Mm -hmm. um, and if it doesn't, hand it back and say, no, no, can you change that? So and will um, they? sometimes I mean... it's hard, but it's if something looks a bit, I, I've done it to people. Okay. Something that looked a bit play, play money-ish to me. I was like, no, no, can you please give me a brand new one? And so what they do is they'll try that on you to see if they can get rid of their dodgy okay someone's obviously given that to them and they want to get rid of it um okay, it's only okay. no once. that's good advice that's um, good advice wood. I haven't uh I, like I said I, most of the situations it. have been pretty pretty smooth but every now and then especially you know in in countries that are supremely foreign and by that I mean they don't speak as much English or they're not especially American friendly, which is what I run into or Western friendly as the case may be. Um, sometimes you get a little more pushback. And so it's a matter of, okay, well, how do you navigate that correctly so that you, you don't get screwed, but also that you don't leave bad vibes because you want to, I mean, I don't mean to go into somebody's country and, and 
you know, assert my dominance at all. I, I want to make sure that, you know, we're flowing mm. well so that I can have a good experience and they don't hate me at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if you do it with a bit of humor, mm -hmm. humor is always taken better than, um, you know, right. <laughs> like I said to the, said to the guy, I said, come on, I said, come on, hang on a minute. Give me, I don't think this looks right. And he had a bit of a laugh and, and then I had a bit of a laugh and I said, okay, can you please give me a brand new uh, version of that, that, you know, whatever it was. And he just looked at me and he was like, oh, you know, I could just <laughs> read his mind about what he was saying. Right. Um, but I, but I think if you're experienced, you, you sort of, you, your gut instinct tells you when something's not right. Right, Wendy. It's it's. Absolutely. I think you, you get that instinct. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. When you're about to be ripped, ripped, ripped off. So. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah. okay. So yeah. one thing we haven't talked about that I really want to circle to because it is my favorite topic of all things, especially in travel, is the food. Finding good food deals. Um, I love the restaurants. Don't get me wrong, and I love restaurants in every country, and I love to sample food as much as I love street food. Um, so, what are your best recommendations for? one, finding good food deals, but two, really making sure that, um, you're sampling everything that I would eat all of the food if they would let me, but what, what do you recommend? Yeah. So be observant when you're in this new place, where is there massive lines of locals standing outside there to get in? Um, and then the really busy places, they're usually one, going to be have the best food mm -hmm. and two, be really affordable because the locals like saving money. Everyone worldwide likes saving money, right? And people aren't going to go to a place that's really expensive. Um, so that would be my big tip. So I'm very observant and I go, okay, I'm going to have some lunch and I just have a bit of a look around and go, okay, that place looks really busy and just observe it before you actually go in and just see what's, are there Westerners in there, you know, other travellers? Are there locals in there? Who's in there? And, and it's usually going to give you an idea that one, that's a popular place and two, it's probably pretty affordable because everyone's in there. Um, I think with new foods, again, it's on your dietary restrictions. You know, if, if you're lucky not to have food allergies then you can pretty much eat anything, right? Um, and you can try anything. But I think um, you've got to be careful if you've got, food allergies I'm one of those people that travelers that has food allergies so I've got to be pretty careful um and, and you know be careful what I eat but I think if you don't have that that issue then you can go for anything um I, th I think with food also we, you know it's, all the food's really lovely we love trying it but I think we've got to be look at safety also around the food so there's certain things that you've got to avoid in certain countries, especially the, the developing countries. Um, sometimes the water over there is not the best. And what do they wash lettuce in? They wash it in in water, the local water. So sometimes you've got to be careful. Also, if you want to have a healthy, sick free <laughs> If you'd like trip. to travel instead of staying in the room, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and spend your time in the toilet. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it, you've got to think of those things as well. So I think you're pretty good um, if you have food that can be peeled. So if mm. you peel it open, then you know no one's touched that. And obviously there's been no water on that. Um, street food, I'm not a fan of street food. Um, I know people love street food because it's one, it's cheap and it's on the, you know, live and on the spot. But Sometimes you've got to wonder about the hygiene of, of sometimes the meat and, and, and the food. Yes. Um, and, and yeah, I'm mindful about not getting any sort of belly problems while I'm up over there. So I, I do watch people eat the street food though. It's quite exciting. It's like a, an, an event in itself. It's experimental um, when you for go, sure. <laughs> yeah. And if you can take, if you're up for the risk, then go for it, Wendy, you know, but um. But what I would say around food and, you know, obviously everyone loves the restaurant foods and the cafes and, and trying the local food. If you're on a really tight budget, it's worth looking into supermarkets mm -hmm. and buying food from there just for, you know, your snacks and stuff, because that's another really great way of um, saving money. And I always go to a supermarket. Um, obviously, you've got your meals, you know, in the hotel, they might give you free breakfast as part of the deal. But, you know, you might want snacks like fruit or and all, and all that. That's another great way of um, tasting the local food as well. 
um, going into the supermarket and sometimes they have like meal deals, you know, like, um, you know, their, their local meal in, in sort of like a, a little pot and they can heat it up for you and then you can take that away. So that's, when it comes to food, there's a lot of options. And again, really the budget of people is, is what really dictates what they do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, food food's fun when you mm -hmm. travel. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting the sense that you are an adventure traveler. You don't typically take the curated like um, club med, all-inclusive kind of trips, which is great because I, that to me sounds like, I mean, it's great if you're going with a group of friends and your, your purpose is just to lay on the beach and do whatever. But if you want to go immerse in a culture, it does seem mm. like a lot more fun to get out and do the things. Um, what are the typical things that you do when you go into a foreign country? You mentioned, you know, shopping, but if you're going to go and experience the culture and experience the country itself, where do you typically find yourself on, on, on a holiday and what, uh, what are your favorite things to do? So if it's a new place, I like to go on tours. So you go this, like a multitude of day tours that you can go on. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, most recently I went to uh, Bangkok and I'd been there before, but I decided I was going to go to Pattaya on an elephant sanctuary and visit an elephant sanctuary. Um, so that was something new that I'd never done. And obviously, you know, I like the shopping there as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just about doing things that you haven't done before. So you might be going back to a place that you've been to before, but there's always going to be things that you haven't done in that mm -hmm. place. Um, we can only do it like a quick snapshot of things in a certain place. So, you know, brand new place, it's always about, okay, what is it that I want to do there? What is the, the, the thing that's really popular there? Um, so, you know, if you're in a Pacific Island, it might be go snorkeling um, and, you know, swim with the turtles or, um, you know, anything, you know, there might be islands close by that you might want to investigate. So I think I'll look at the place that I'm going to and then think about what, I, what I'm going to do. What, what has that place got to offer me? Um, and yeah, the shopping is not in every place. So, you know, sh shopping sometimes can't be done, but then there's other things to it that, that you can amuse yourself with. So whether that's swimming, walking along the beach, snorkeling going on a, a day tour um yeah that I mean the beauty of travel is there's so many different tours and experiences that you can have and it's just really about what you want to do mm -hmm. right and and what what's the, the special thing about that place so um yeah absolutely be open and adventurous be safe so I'd say I'm adventurous but I'm also aware of the safety because you know I don't actually not want to come back from where I'm just visiting. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it's always having a good balance is always a good thing, Wendy. Which I mean, brings up another point. A lot of people don't um, necessarily look at politics before they jump on a plane. Um, but there's a lot of reason to do that. And part of preparation too, I think, do you spend a lot of time looking at, at um, the stability of, of a current regime before you head to a foreign country or do you just dive right in and hope for the best? Um, I do investigate. In Australia, we've got a really wonderful, um, and you guys have probably got it similar. We've got a um, travel website called The Smart Traveller. Mm -hmm. um, and what it has on there, it tells you about the, the security risk, the political environment, the health, um, all the things you need to be aware of, um, whether you should be travelling there. So that's my first place that I go to. Um, I do also keep an eye on what's going on. So obviously when I went to South Korea, I wanted to have a, you know, I had a bit of a look on CNN and and a few other um, cable shows to find out what was going on with, with North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, he's very unpredictable of when he does his tests. Right. Um, and I just thought, well, you know what? I've got to go sometime. Let's pick this date. Um, and that's when I had my holidays. And luckily for me, it was only on the last day that he did his <laughs> like his missiles so um that was an experience that I'll I'll certainly write about in the future um but yeah it you know you just got to be aware um and, and you know what if we we're, if we're that careful and that risk averse we'd never go anywhere we'd stay in our own country and we wouldn't travel um so I think uh, again it's about the balance of it right mm -hmm. um 
the world is so wonderful. There are so many things that are so great for us to experience. Life is so short. You know, we're only on the work on, in this life for a short amount of time. It's about seeing the best we can of, of everything. Um, but, you know, obviously I'm not going to be, you know, um, going into a war zone or anything like that. Um, not intentionally, not knowingly, no. anyway. <laughs> I mean, not with not with a purpose, but you know, sometimes these things happen. <laughs> I mean, that's it. But I'll tell you one thing that I, I I do do is when I hear or see anything that's not right, I get out of there quick, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'll run, I'll run out of there, and I've done that in some places. Um, just because your safety, you know, when it's fight, flight, or freeze, you've got to flight you know usually our, our human instinct is to flight and get out of there well that's to keep alive right so mm -hmm. always do that you know hoping you do touch wood that you don't have to do that but if you do get out of there as quickly as possible agreed agreed I'm putting that in my backpack notes absolutely agreed um so let me ask you this so what is your next trip my next trip um I'll be going to Japan so heading there in November, um, I was there quite a few years ago, um, but haven't been there recently. So that's the next one. Um, and 2024 is full of some lovely, lovely places um, that I'm going to be going to. So next oh, no, year is an more. I want to know hopping. where. Don't just um, don't just blanket it. Yeah. Tell me where. So, so uh, I'm going to Tahiti. Um, then heading to Honolulu, which is a, a, a perennial favourite of mine. I've been there that many times, but Australians love Honolulu. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm going to uh, Phuket. So I'll be heading back to Thailand to go to Phuket and I'm going to see the Phi Islands while I'm over there. And then so far, um, another island will be uh, New Mia. So uh, yeah, New Caledonia, but that's so far for next year. So that's four trips. Haven't These done any more sound like investigating, um, but I'm sure there'll be some others on the. They sound amazing. They sound like amazing trips. So just let's just, so like package this quickly. I mean, obviously we want people to go to your website and learn more and read your books and we'll get to that, but you're getting ready to go on a trip. You're getting ready to book a trip. What is your personal process? Like step one, step two, step three of how you prepare, um, where you go to get the best deal and, and like how, how you curate your own adventure. Okay, so we work out where we're going. Mm -hmm. um, then I see if there's any sales fares. So book the flight. Um, once the fair fare's booked, then I will get the accommodation and again, look look for the deals. Um, I think the two most important things is your flight and your accommodation. Um, you know, the, tra the, the, the transporter and the tours, you can do a little bit. A little bit of research. Okay, new place. What am I going to do? Am I going on a tour? Then book that. Um, how am I going to get from the airport? Is it going to be Uber? Is it going to be cab? Am I going to get a transfer? Get that booked. Um, and then normally what I do, so about a week out, I will then do a, a quick update visas. So also another good thing to look at is do you need a visa based on your passport? Usually they'll tell you when you're booking the flight, but usually they won't let you get that until about 72 hours out. But it, it depends on what country. So um, yeah, you need to also get the visa. Um, look at the health requirements um, as well, probably 72 hours out. Um, I then have sort of a packing list. So I've got a, a blank template of a packing list and then I will just put in my place and the things that I think I need to pack and enter them in, in, in on the sheet, print it up, get in the room, start packing um, and then book the Uber for the next morning and and make sure my alarm's ready and then head off. Um, and obviously also get some money out of the bank. So we get, <laughs> right. again, make money. sure the credit cards are in in there and, and, you know, have the budget of money that I need. So, you know, if it's Asia, then I know I only need, a, a you know, only a small amount of money. Get it in the wallet, in my purse, take it with me. Get myself, get the, uh, the bag all packed, ready the night before ready to go the next morning um and then yeah we're on let someone know where i'm going so we've got that security also um mm -hmm. of my travel plans and then yeah we head off so it's very quick um doing the booking 
would probably take me an afternoon um, doing a bit of research there, you know, probably, yeah, maybe an hour or two, an hour, like a week before. Um, I've sort of in a rhythm now, so it's it's just a follow the rhythm. Everyone's got their own rhythm, though. You know, if if if, it, if you haven't travelled for a while, and and it, it might take you a little bit longer to do that sort of thing. But for me, it's about packing the night before, um, and yeah, obviously then just taking off, making sure when you you walk out that door that you've got all your passport and your tra and your travel documents, your wallet, your suitcase, your locks. And yourself and then go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now let's talk about your books and let's talk about your website. So everyone knows how to find you and find more information about what you uh, recommend and what you don't recommend and all of the tips and tools that you have. Yeah. So my books, I've got eight books in, um, all up. So six books in the Smart Travelista series. Um, and so finding the best travel bargains and managing your budget. Um, I've also got a shopping book, which um, if people, I was just going to say, if anyone, any of the listeners would like a free shopping book, they can hit me up, um, contact me on the website, and I'm happy to send that to them, um, but would love it if they would sign up for the newsletter as well. Um, also, how to increase your airline loyalty points and fly for free. So we're drilling down on the miles, how to build the miles, um, how to protect your travel health and safety. So it's around the health and safety, how to travel with food allergies. Um, and also the most recent one is Mastering Solo Travel. Um, I've got two other books which are in the Annex from Abroad series. So, you know, when we spoke about all those things that can go wrong when we travel, well, these two books are all about those those experiences that I've had, but also experiences people I've met have had. Um, so, yes, if you wanted an entertaining read, they would be the place to go. Um my website is full of lovely travel resources. So it's the smarttravelista.com. Um, people can um, go and read my lovely blog, um, find out more about the books, connect with me on social media. Um, I'm also on YouTube. So on social media, um, I'm on YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter, in Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I'm always up for a chat with people. If you've got a travel question, you know where to find me and yeah, always love engaging with people. So feel free to come on over to my little neck of the woods and we can, I'll share some travel tips with you. That sounds amazing. And we'll actually, I'll put all of those in the show notes so everyone can find you pretty easily on all the platforms, but uh, definitely to the website where you've got your list of books. And uh, we may even put the Amazon links just to make it really easy for everyone. But I think it's fantastic. This has been a wonderful conversation. I feel like um, we'll probably have you on again when I'm getting ready to travel. So you can give me all of the details and insights you have for every location that I, I, I hope to go to. My philosophy on travel is always my favorite place mm. to travel is the place I haven't been. So I, there's so many places left for me to go. Um, and, and the places I've already been are lovely, but now they already feel like home. So I want to go see the other things. Um, but I, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for joining me tonight today i guess it's still today for you thank you <laughs> yes thanks for having me wendy it's been, been a great conversation and yeah travel you have to travel you have to travel you only grow when you travel absolutely awesome thank you so much linda yeah. king and um i hope to have you on again soon but uh thank you so much for your insight i value you thank you 